All right, so I'm going to continue with outcome R2, and this time we're going to be looking at 7.3. We're going to look at solving absolute value equations. So if you remember what an equation was, uh, it's an equation has an equal sign in it. And we're going to be looking at uh, something that looks like this. So you're going to have the absolute values the absolute value stuff here and the regular stuff here or you might have something multiplied by absolute value stuff plus some regular stuff equaling some other stuff and so on you could have a linear absolute value like here and then equals a quadratic something over here In either case we're gonna figure out how to uh, solve these and when you're doing them, just keep in mind to first isolate the absolute value expression, okay? And then after that, you have to remember that there is a case one where it's the regular version of the function, so it's the original, where it's positive or zero. And then case two is the expression inside the absolute value symbol is negative. Uh, so we saw a little bit of that in the last video, uh, just to give you a little bit of reminder if we have something like the first example uh, what we want is we want case one we want case one to look like this x minus three equals seven and we want case two to be negative x minus three equals seven Okay, and then we're going to solve those algebraically. But before we solve those algebraically, I just want to talk a little bit about what this actually is doing, what you're doing. So you're finding, so we're going to figure out that there's two different values of x that are going to result in the same answer of 7. So if you look at this on a number line, uh, we want to figure out what our possible x's could be. So Let's say we're going to start here. We're going to start here at 3. So let's plot 3 on our number line. And then we're trying to figure out if I go this way, 7 units, where do we end up? So if you go 3 and then plus 7, where are you going to end up? Well, you're going to end up at 10, right? So x, we're going to guess that x is going to be 10. And if I start at 3 and then I go in the other direction, uh, 7 units, where are we going to end up? Well, 3 and we go 7 in the opposite direction, so then we're going to end up at negative 4. So then our x could be negative 4. So now if you just kind of think and just in your head really uh, put a negative 4 in here, what do you end up getting? Well, you end up getting uh, negative 4 minus 3, that's negative 7. The absolute value of negative 7 is 7 and if you put a 10 in here you get 10 minus 3 which is 7 and the absolute value of 7 well is 7 okay so this is just a little visual of what the absolute value equation is trying to figure out okay so let's go and do this algebraically all right so algebraically again we almost did it in the last page uh, so we've got our original we're gonna have case 1 which is the original so you got x minus 3 equals 7 and then you've got your case 2 which is the negative of it so make sure you have your brackets there because if you don't have your brackets you have problems x minus 3 equals 7 x is equal to add 3 add 3 x is equal to 10 okay so that's one of our solutions and then our next one here multiply this negative through make sure you distribute properly and then you get uh, negative x is equal to 4 and x is equal to negative 4 so there's your other solution now I showed you the number line a couple seconds ago what we're gonna do to verify this is we're gonna verify this graphic on a two-dimensional graph now instead of one-dimensional. So the way to do this is to graph x minus 3, the absolute value of x minus 3. So if we remember what that looked like, uh, we plot our y-intercept and then we go up, up 1 over 1. 
So this is what it's going to look like. And then I can't have any of these values, right? So they get jumped up there. So they become positive. Okay, um, if I could find my ruler, my makeshift ruler, I'm going to draw this in. So that's my absolute value. Okay, and that's this is the y equals absolute value of x minus 3 part. And then I'm going to graph y equals 7 on the same graph. And just, I'm just going to extend this a little bit just because, well, because I should. You'll see in a second. Uh, then we've got our y equals 7, so that's 7 right there. And then I'm going to draw this line straight across because that's what y equals 7 looks like. And what we're doing is we're finding where these two equations intersect. So these two graphs intersect precisely at negative 4. So that's x equals negative 4. And this right here is x equals 10. So you can see that right there, right? That's exactly where they intersect. That's what we got in our original solution. And very exciting. Okay. Take it all in, folks. Let's go to the next one. Okay, so this was the, I think I mentioned uh, right at the beginning here, we need to first isolate the absolute value expression. So it was already done in our first question, so we need to first, abs sorry, we need to first isolate that part right there. Uh, in order to do that, just add 7 on both sides, and you end up with the absolute value of 2x minus 5 equals 7 minus 3, which is just 4. And now this is what I'm going to solve with my two cases. So you want case 1, the original. So 2x minus 5 equals 4. And then I want case 2. And that is with the negative multiplying through. So I've got here negative, and then change that to a regular bracket, 2x minus 5 equals 4. Now I can run through, do the algebra, figure out what x is. So 2x minus 5 equals 4, 2x equals 9, x equals 9 over 2. That's like four and a half in decimal. And here this is negative 2x minus oh, plus 5, sorry, and that equals 4. So we've got negative 2x equals 1, negative 1. And then x is equal to 1 half. So I've got two answers. I've got 9 over 2 and 1 half. And if I were to graph this, I'm going to find that these two lines, and when you're graphing it, I'll give you a hint, uh, I want you to graph uh, from here once we've isolated. So graph y equals 2x minus 5, and graph y equals 4. And I want to see where you find them intersecting. So why don't you try this? Um, and I think in class what we'll do is we'll have a look at what the graph looks like, uh, make sure you get it, and we'll also show you the proper verification of what, um, what to do algebraically instead of just graphically. Okay? Uh, if you want, give it a try and we'll have a look at it. So I'm going to stop this video now and I'm going to do a couple more interesting examples in the next video. So stay tuned.